In this video, I want to give a brief overview of the functions of the nervous system and how patients and clinicians interact with the functions of the nervous system in terms of neurological disorders. Dysfunction of parts of the nervous system may cause different patterns of functional abnormalities called syndromes. Syndromes consist of symptoms and signs. Symptoms are mental or physical abnormalities reported by the patient or witnesses, whereas signs are mental or physical abnormalities found by clinicians on examination. So for example, here a patient might say, my leg feels numb, and we'd often call that the subjective abnormality or the symptom. And then when the clinician examines the patient, they might find decreased touch sensation of the leg. And we would call that an objective finding or a sign. And when you put together all the symptoms and signs that a patient has, we call that their syndrome. Neurological syndromes are caused by lesions in the nervous system. And we use this term lesion to refer to the location of an area of dysfunctional tissue that's causing a neurological syndrome. So we, when we use the term lesion, we're not referring to a specific type of disorder or pathology. We're instead just talking about a location where the tissue isn't working right and that leads to symptoms and signs. Neurological syndromes may be caused by one or more neurological disorders, which are diseases that cause a lesion somewhere in the nervous system. The functions of the nervous system can be divided in many different ways, but the way I like to think about it is by dividing them up into what I what I just refer to as high, the higher and the lower functions of the nervous system. And you could use all sorts of different terms to try to divide up the functions of the nervous system, but the way I think about it in this group, I, I think of as the lower or more basic or more kind of physical neural functions are carried out by many parts of both the central and the peripheral nervous system, so that lesions in many different places in the nervous system can cause abnormalities of these lower neural functions. And these could also be divided in lots of different ways, but the way I think about them are in terms of sensory, motor, and autonomic functions. When we think of sensory functions of the nervous system, the nervous system can sense many aspects of the body and the environment, and these sensory functions include vision, hearing, smell, taste, a sense from the inner ear called this vestibular sense, and multiple senses of the body, collectively called somatosensation, under which are senses of touch, position of body parts, vibration, pain, temperature, and others. The word motor in this context refers to the control of skeletal muscle contraction for movement, tone, and posture. Skeletal muscle cells make up the main type of muscle tissue of the body, which is mostly attached to the bones of the skeleton, allowing us to move. Autonomic functions of the nervous system usually do not require the involvement of consciousness. They are mostly autonomous and they involve control of smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and some gland cells. And these cells are involved in important physical functions like circulation and digestion. What I think of as the higher neural functions, or the more complex, or the more mental neural functions, are carried out mainly by parts of the brain, so that lesions in the brain tend to affect the higher neural functions. These could also be divided many ways, but I like to think of them in terms of cognition, emotion, and consciousness. I think of cognition as types of activities involving thinking, such as reasoning, learning, memory, language, and what are called the executive functions, which involve controlling the other cognitive functions and behavior to achieve goals. Emotions are types of activities that we often refer to as feelings. And these are both positive and negative and play a major role in a person's experiences and behaviors. Defining consciousness is very difficult and we'll get into some of the different ways we can do that. But I, I often think of this term as representing having awareness of one's identity and experiences and having control over one's behavior. In the neurological examination, which is part of the physical examination performed by clinicians, involves assessing aspects of these neural functions at that moment in time. 